our pastor, the revealer of the mystery illumined. He is the Iambi, Prophet Melek Eshadah. Glory to the name of the Almighty. The holy angels of days, my Father in heaven, your Father in heaven, who looks upon his children in the earth, and whom he has cherished, and send forth his Spirit to abide there. Oh, how he loves us. We come before thee, blessed Father. I bring this people as thou have commanded me. And they have come because thou have given them unto me that I will prepare them to give them back unto thee where once before they were only a people but now they are your people your family father we thank you for your household we glorify your name We bless you. Now I ask that you look upon this day that is set aside, consecrated. And the consecration that you have sealed each one this day who have not gathered in the name of religion under the pretense of some God and denomination and religious ways unholy but have gathered in your name holy asariya in holiness who desire thee, who yearn for thee. I see a boy. Let the gates be prepared for the wrapping up of the age and the coming in of your children entering into the gates with praise and thanksgiving unto your name. Seal each one. Ah, Satan, I know thee. And you know that I know thee. I know thee from afar. I know thee in thy illusion, in thy deception, in ways and manner that men on this earth know you not. But deception does not abide in this house, and neither the children that are deceived. Now we prepare ourselves, Father for your word the highest dimension expressed in the oration of words by the mouth but not the mere mouth of men but thy prophet of the realm 
whom thou have placed thyself in and thrown thyself to teach thy people. Thou ruleth forever. We exalt thee. Seal thy people. I speak to their body. Thou must obey me. All animated and inanimated objects and substance must obey my voice. And these who live that thou have sealed, seal them, Father, to live forevermore. Power given unto them. In thy name. And the living sanctuary you came down in to prepare the way through. Thy son Yahusha Amashiach. We so pray. Amen. So shall it be as it is said. So it is received, so it is done. The word is born. Born is the word of the Most High in me. Sovereign house. And his elect remnant. Now and forevermore. It is so done. Blessings. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessings and honor upon the Holy Overseer, Malka, Elder, and Evangelist. Bless upon the Sovereign House, bless upon the pillars of the Prophet, the hierarchy, the branches, everyone, the family, Tan Beth Yahoo. And those that are listening abroad and have gathered here with us. You may have your seats. Open with me now in the Holy Sefer, known as the Bible. I'm beginning now in this session of teachings, the gathering of this higher dimension. Amen. I'll begin with this. We've taught many things over the many years. The message of the kingdom of light. The ministry was established on the foundation of only one foundation that is eternal. I'm going to ask everyone, listen very carefully. Beginning this session and the next few, you will not just hear. I am not interested, hear me now, in you hearing me with your ears because it is a waste of time to me. having itching ears which we do not have. But you have to hear the word. You will learn some things.
which is time for you to know but you'd never heard of however I express that with the spirit of humility why because knowing the type of prophet that I am let me say this when Yahushua said that the harvest is ripe but the laborers are few. When this is read in the word, the Holy Sefer, those that are listening abroad may wonder, what do I mean, Sefer? It is Hebrew for the book, the holy book, which many call Bible. The word Bible comes from the Latin word, Biblios. If you hear in the word biblios you also hear the word theos say that theos hence those that are listening you also hear me use the expression oftentimes almighty and I'll speak in the raw language the almighty Because he is the Almighty. <laughs> the term Biblios, hence the word Theos, which means God, is a Latin word stemming from Latin, hence Greek. promoted from the papu bull the papu bull is the pope and it is a pantheon a god and this is what is done you have your seats expressed almost everywhere you go you grew up calling the almighty God but he heard you didn't he later on in the years because of ignorance the scripture declared he winked at your ignorance you will not get caught up in semantics sayings you spell God G-O-D in reverse it is dog and he is not a dog come on so why not call him the almighty call him the way the prophet called him. That's what I call him. The Almighty. The Most High is an expression as well as the highest. But when you say the Almighty, come on. This expands for eternity without end. And it has an unlocking virtue. I want you to say and feel when you say it. But don't say it almighty. Say it with the raw speech you can speak. 
almighty. You feel like this force rise up in you. Why? Because that's who he is. He's the almighty. The almighty. And sometime, you don't have time to pray. Some may say, you must pray always. Yes, but there are times you don't pray, you speak the word. Or you just call him. You call him in the situation. And you're not calling him down from somewhere. Down from some summit or mountain. You're calling him from the throne in your heart. Where he places spirit, and you call him in your home, and you call him in the midst of where you are, and say, Almighty, and he filled the room. Have you seen? Because people hear me call him Almighty. And the perception look that I receive is an oddity. Strange. We live in an earth that's populated over 7 billion people and if I say this those that are listening I understand how difficult it is to truly grasp what I'm going to say when I said at one time it's an example. That the prophets of the Almighty are scarce in the earth. They have always been, always been. I said, in this age, and this was about five years ago, there are only enough that I can count on one hand I said at the time about four there are less than four prophets in the earth today are you hearing me and in these last days The ones that the most high are moving through are the prophets of the realm. I say this, this seems odd, off to people. Why? Because the many who claim to be prophets, who prance around full of deception, lust, and abomination but no power. Show me a true prophet. I will show you the power of the Most High. Show me a true prophet and I will show you the revelation of the mysteries of the Most High revealed. Show me a true prophet and then I will show you a people raised up who are full of the knowledge of the kingdom. Then I must ask this question. 
Since when the Almighty have prophets in Africa? In this land called America that have no power, no knowledge. Come. None. Never have we ever heard of it. Have your seats, please. And the teacher of the end time, the most I spoke to me, we've covered many things, and I told you. If you've ever heard end time teachings, if it was a vessel teaching in time of truth, if it was a true prophet, you would have heard truth. Not those who refer to the signs of the ages that they see and then call that end time teaching. That is not end time teaching. I am the only prophet of the realm who teach the end times in the depth that I do after the message of the kingdom of light. You say, why you? I didn't choose that. And there are other things I did not choose either, which we will cover. It's only because he chose me to wrap up the age as the fire law. close up the age you see and so being of the last age more is given because the generation is more wicked you understand so it take more to reach you understand this see a people are going to have to be taught and raised up for the glory in the cloud of the Most High to come and dwell amongst them and his body seen walking in the midst of his people. You understand what type of virtue is that? You understand what type of fragrance of love that must emanate from you that caused the Father to draw in the midst of his people gathered in his chamber Come, cry out unto him, and then he come down in the cloud. And when you look, you see the shadow, the silhouette of a man. And you wonder who that is, but it's the Almighty in the clouds, walking in the midst of his people. We are coming back to the dread of the Almighty in the earth. Because man of this age and the wicked lawless beast system will not honor will not call him and the only way they're going to call him is by the dread of the almighty they will have to see the power of the almighty word preached and demonstrated to frighten them so they run and if they sit in the mist when the word is being preached of the Father and they defy in their heart, then fire fall from heaven and consume their flesh and fear fall upon everybody. But well, who do you think he's going to use to carry it? It's coming through this prophet and the people that he's raising up unto the Almighty. Oh, have your seats, please. I've been away. Look at me. Look in my face. I have been away. You thought I was with you. I was with you physically. But I've been away. 
for 18 years and you never knew it. An overseer was with me. I say it again, I'm going to say it again. And I'm going to speak it in the raw language. Hear me? Since I little, hear me? I don't run after Babylon. I never take the woman of Babylon. I never kiss the lip of the woman of Babylon. I never drink the wine of Babylon. I never dance to the music of Babylon. I never sing the song of Babylon. I never eat the food of Babylon. As a prophet of the realm, the Father put it in my heart a long time. And I call him for my boy, put me knee. I climb the mountain them in Jamaica and I call him. I drop down the valley in the banana grove there and I call him. You understand what we say? Nothing of Babylon I want. Nothing of Babylon. I never turn to Egypt and go to the flesh pot. Because the bread from heaven was everything to me. I love him. I worship him. I am put it in my heart, you see. By him, you know. I speak it by the raw language. And him can trust me not to raise our people unto him. I sought no glory. I sought no prayers. Only praise and glory for the Almighty. It is he who have put the love in my heart for his people. I want for nothing. All I want, all I and I want is that his people call him and love him. I am a jealous man. For the Almighty. Yes. So he put inside of me a mountain. And the mountain he put in me is a Mount Zion. And I climb Mount Zion and I go there and I see him. And him give me water from his vine, and I drink that water. I have to have a people that love him unconditionally. No woman out there. No man out there. Flesh should be taken off as bread to forsake the bread of the Almighty. Oh, I heard for him in my heart. I heard for him in my heart. And all I ever wanted was the soul of men to call him. I cried for the souls of men to be saved since I was a boy. Oh, and the burden is still there. Oh! And if nobody called, and all of mankind is dead and gone. So 
the task he gave me is heavy and I know I can bear it but there was a task that he gave me I felt like I could not bear it was hard you don't understand I'm going to tell you I have been for the last 18 years walking in the valley of the shadow of death. You never knew I preached. And I was walking in the valley of the shadow of death. The devil tell me, I'm going to kill you today. I said to him, since when you speak truth, the truth never been in you. You've been a liar since the beginning. I know you. And you know me. I've been in the valley. It's just now since I come out the valley. It was hard. But I remember you. I remember you. I remember all of you. I said, I can't leave you. I can't leave you, you see. I said, I can't leave you. I have to be here for you. During the time of the lawlessness and this beast system, we must go through together. We must come out together. We must prevail together. We must be triumphant together. We must stand as a beacon before the Almighty together. Have your seats. I will tell you more of this. I will tell you what the valley of death is. Many read Psalms 23 and don't understand what it is. You will learn for the first time, it will be uttered in the earth what the valley of death is. Because twofold, David, who bared the spirit of the prophet, spoke prophetic, but he did not know. But he only knew the physical planes of the valley of death. But you don't have to go through it now. Because I've been there. And I know the way out. Well, there are things I must tell you first on today, this teaching. Very few people have ever experienced salvation. Look at me. This is what they've experienced. An idea of salvation. Meaning, the idea of self indulgence. Hear this. Self indulgence of sincerity. What is sincerity? Anyone? Simplest definition. 
It's a desire. There it is. It is a genuine feeling. It does not necessarily have to be truth. It's an emotional, genuine feeling. It comes with tears. Hmm? It comes with the idea of repentance, right? But not necessarily truth. So there are genuine people. And so if they hear me teach and preach this way, because religion has blinded them, what happened? They say this cannot be because the genuine sincerity of their emotions cause them to reject this. Because they believe it's for everyone. But I'm going to say this. What we're going to read. You ready? You see my face? You saw me shake my head? I did that because of my concern for people. Not my concern for you. You know I concern for you. But I'm not concerned for you when it comes to the word, because you know the word. You've been raised up in the spirit of truth. You know, anything I say will be confirmed. But I'm concerned for those that are going to hear it, but I have to say it. Not only... Very few people you ever meet have ever come to know salvation. Let me explain why. Because they have not truly repented. They were sincere. They had a genuine feeling. Cry, fell down, said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They said, God, Jesus, forgive me, I'm sorry get up off their knee give and take some time and go right back to sin so then was it true or were they lying see you don't want to call it lying because you can relate to what the true sincere genuine emotion But putting all true, sincere, genuine emotions aside and picking up the truth. Because the scripture never said, Yahushua never said, the true, sincere, genuine feeling that you have will make you free. He said, the truth will make you free. And what is the truth? See, there are many truths. But there's only one the truth. And that is the word of the Almighty. He never said, your sincerity, your crying, your genuine feeling... You saying, I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. Though that's true. That is not the truth that make you free. But there are millions of people who call themselves Christians who believe that's how they're saved. Right? So if a preacher give what they call an altar call, what do you have? You have people running to the altar, what? Crying? Lifting up their hands like they're scraping and pulling after the Lord, saying, Forgive me, right? right? But then, after give some time, they go back to sin. So, it's to say that they were not sincere, they were sincere, but they were never of the truth because it's only the truth that makes you free. And when you truly repent, 
you turn away from all your sins and wickedness and you never go back to it again. But I challenge in this level of consciousness, I challenge any man and any woman get sick get some disease that cripple your body you're going to beg the almighty you're going to beg somebody you're going to seek a doctor to try help cure you and if by chance perhaps you come upon wellness in your body you're not going to want to go back to sickness You're not going to want to go back to the disease. Come on. So then why go back to the disease of sin? Come on. Then truly repent. Turn away from it. You understand that now? See that consciousness? Raise that in the mind of people. Now hear this. Very few people ever in the earth know the Most High. Let's just say God generically for people. But know the Most High or ever knew Him in the earth. Because the only way to know the Most High And I do mean to know him in the power of his might. It's through his prophets. And to experience him by his word, the spirit of his word, is through the Holy Spirit. So therefore, people must be taught the most high. And the Holy Spirit helps you navigate. Come on. What you learn to know more of him. Hear this now. I'm going to say something. And I shake my head. Because there are those that's listening abroad. And what I'm going to say again, I'm not concerned about the family here. Because you've been taught. You have a consciousness you know. But for them, I'm concerned. So I'm going to say this. Listen carefully. Take notes. Follow along with me in the Holy Scriptures. And you're going to learn the precepts of the laws of the Word. You're going to be raised to a consciousness. Hear this now. And putting aside all true, genuine feelings of sincerity alone. I didn't say you can't have genuine feelings of sincerity. You can have that, but have it with the truth. What did I say? If you're going to be genuine, sincere, have with what? The truth, which is the word that is spirit and life. But not the idea of religion, denomination, right? And false worship. So what I'm about to say. As many things I've taught must be heard worldwide what I'm going to say must be heard worldwide you ready we know there is not a universal salvation meaning everybody in the world will not be saved 
Everybody in the world prior to this world was not saved. The world to come will not be saved. Now let's go into this. Open with me in the Holy Scriptures. And follow along with me. And I want you to take notes. I'm going to go into something that's very important that I've taught for years though I did not use the very word synergism say that say it again synergistic synergism if we are to experience the fullness of the word of the almighty it has to be in true worship of righteousness and holiness. But there must be synergism. Note that. Write that down if you would. Synergism. Synergism. I'm going to give you the definition. Very simple. Synergism. It is the interaction. What does interaction mean? To interact. To exchange, to correspond, to communicate with, right? It is the interaction or corporation. Corporation. What is corporation? The combining, right? To bring together of two or more, ready? Woo! Organisms. Two or more, what? Organism. So, what did I give you so far? That's synergism, correct? What are organisms? Living cell beings. Do we have organisms in our body? On a cellular level, right? Come on. I can teach you how to change your DNA. Long before science ever came to know that the DNA can be altered, I taught it for over 30 years. And I showed it how to be done. How to program the DNA even in unborn children. I did it with my own children. And I told overseer, watch. When they're born, this one will do this, that, or that. Now they come out later with something they call epigenetics, which they teach is not changing DNA. But think of it like this, a sleeve on a shirt or a jacket. You take off the sleeve. See? Every organism in our body is designed to respond to its environment. Say that. Whether the environment is good, whether the environment is bad. We will get a stress response. Remember I taught the body's very stubborn. So there has to be stress for it to change or else it will die. It will dead and gone. Then what use are you to the Almighty if you're dead and gone? I 
tell somebody just the other day, yesterday, a beautiful African woman she said to me, she said, I want to be like you. I said, you don't know me, but I see. You're powerful. And you know so much. I want you to go to Africa. I said, I will go. I've been, I'll go back. I said, I want to be like you. I know this woman don't know me now. She says, want to be like me. She says, how you love the Almighty. So she starts saying Almighty. Like I taught her to say Almighty. How you love him, I want to love him too. Because when I saw her, I grab her up. Big, thick woman, you know. Strong. I grab her. I take her and I pick her up. She said, I had 200 pounds. I pick her up and I grab her and I grab her by the head and I kiss her on the cheek. I said, I love you. I said, The Almighty. Wow. And I just revealed the Almighty. She started for crying. I said, You hear me? I said, I for speaking in a raw language, you know. You talk about the Almighty. You ever talk raw? The Almighty, give me a song, you know. I start to sing the song. Come up my spirit. Whoa. I won't give the full melody right now, you know, but I said, no worm, no worm will eat this body. For the word have consumed this body. I have drinking of the rivers of Zion. Yeah. Woo! We're going to sing this song in the raw language. Come now. They can call it reggae all they want. It's not reggae. It's the, it's the beat and the music of our people going back. You understand what I'm saying? Come on now. I said, by the rivers of Babylon. And my ancestors sat down. And they hung their harps upon the tree. And the Assyrians said to them, dance for us. And they could not dance. And they were taken captive because of their rebellion. I said, but me... I will not be taken captive and no worm will eat this body. For the word have consumed me. You can't eat. You cannot eat what's not there because it's gone. And that's where I must bring you. No worm will eat our body. We will not be the feast of maggots. Glory to the name of God. Why? Because he's given us a law of life. I have a mandate from the Almighty to live and not die. Amen. So when I sit up there and make maggot eat me, and me not sit there and let maggot eat you either.
because maggots are organism that want to feed upon dead flesh. Come now. See, but like me tell them, you know, a dead man can't die twice. Who heard me? Oh. Hear me? When I go into this thing, the world will be changed. A new world is created in you and it's going to come out. Let me tell all the doctors, let me tell them. Let me look dead to you. I said, a dead man can't die twice. Yeah. 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 Woo, Woman of Zion, did I not say that? You said it. They look at me like, what do I mean? I speak it in a raw language like this, you know? Can we start talking this way? You must speak raw. Yeah. And look at me like, what? I said, dead, a dead man can't die twice. I said, me not afraid of you. Woo! I said to them, me dead long time. <laughs> because if in order to live, you must dead. Yes. Must die to self. Yes. Sit down here this now. So the living organism, the body has become, in order for it to be an enhanced organism, it has to be synergized, right? By the word. The word of the Almighty. You know what vex me? Do you know what vex me? You say, do you know what vex me? Awaken something Israel. Tired them ways, you know. Tired of the religious. They quote scriptures and don't even understand. All they talk is foolishness from the mouth. And give glory to the beard. But then in the grave and the worm has eaten them. And don't even know. I cast out devils without beard. Heal the sick without beard. Raise the dead without beard. And like I tell the woman from Africa. She said, you raised dead? I said, yes, by the power of the Almighty. I said, what's more powerful than raising the dead? She said, there's something more powerful than raising the dead? I said, yes, cutting off death. Yeah. Stopping death from prevailing. Because if you have, I have to raise somebody from the dead, then death prevailed. Are you hearing me? But when you can cut off death and stop death from having victory over them, that's more powerful. Woo! Glory. She said to me, and Holy Overseer, me never know that. I said, you yeah, ask a good question. And now you get a powerful answer. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh. oh, sit down. Synergism. Now, we'll not go into everything about synergy, but I'll give you just enough that you can journey in your mind, thoughts, and studies. But understand the word. The word, most I taught me this, he spoke this to me himself over 35 years ago. He said, my word, even that dwell in thee, thou art a walking word, is the generating force, thus regenerates. I said, yes, Father. So the word of the Almighty is a generating, regenerating force. If you know how to.
abide in it. Abiding in it is not quoting scriptures. Abiding in it is not only living by the laws and precepts. There is the spiritual essence of it. So remember, synergism is what? The interaction or corporation of two or more organisms. So we know the word is letter as well as in the precepts, right? The laws, Torah, but we must take it from the, from the letter, the spirit of it. And so what do we have then? A type of two organisms, right? The letter of it, living the law of it, but then the spirit of it, right? We're not calling the spirit of the word an organism, nor are we calling the word an organism, but an example, we're using substance. Two types of substance combined together. The word, instruction of how we live as a way of life, not religion. Serving the Father is not a religion and denomination. It's a way of life. So living the word as a way of life, the spirit of the word thereof in holy true worship, hence the substance of it combined with what? The body, which is an organism. This substance. That's what? Synergism. What else must be done? I promote what? Exercise. Eating well. I want you to do this with me, an overseer. Beginning this week, let's continue to the coming of Yahushua Mashiach flooding the body with chlorophyll and high protein intake I would tell people for years that you have to have high protein intake studies showed that you have to get a gram per pound of your body weight and then the Lord dealt with me, and I said, you need more than that. So when the Father dealt with me, I went and I looked into it, and what do you think I found? New studies of scientists out of universities. Instead of a gram per, per body weight, they recommend four grams per body weight. You do the math. So if you weigh 200 pounds, 200 grams, right? It's four grams per body weight. How much is that? How much? 800 grams. Now you can't get that in one setting. It has to be throughout the week. Why? Because what they call protein is a what? an amino acid. Amino acids are what? Building blocks for the body. Look at it this way. It's a glue. It glues the bones together, glues the skin together. It glues everything on a cellular level together in your body. Tight. We are living in the age of plagues. And diseases for the body to heal for the body to overcome the plagues you will need amino acids because it's the building block also for muscles and the body when it needs to heal it does not use fat it uses muscle pure lean muscle which is protein amino acid to survive so the more muscle you have you are increase your survival synergism come on Because the immune system 
is strengthened from the muscle, which is protein, which is amino acid. But if you don't have it, and your body fat count is high, and lean muscle mass is low, then you what? Lessen your survival chance of living. We're living in the age of diseases. And it's only going to get worse. So you have to what? Increase. Intensify. See, strength training is not enough. Because if you strength train only, then you break down tissue. You break down muscle. And you put the body in a catabolic state so you have to feed it protein so it becomes the glue the, re, the rebuilding structure the building block not because you want to look good only feel good but what increase your what chances of what survival that synergy is not just having the word, right? But also what? Using what the Father has put there for this body they call an organism. Are you understanding this? And I'll tell you why, but not now. So synergy is more than one organism. Substance to produce a combined effect greater than the sum of their separate effects. So it's the combination of more than one substance to produce a greater effect than the sum, meaning the total of just one substance. You have to combine together, rest, increase the protein intake, Strengthen the body. Increase the chlorophyll. Saturate and permeate the body with the word. Woo, glory. Who's hearing me? Because Tanbeth Yahu, O holy lek remnant, the bounty is out. I read it. Not written in paper but as a watchman that watch over the elect remnant that the fathers appointed I stood at the entrance and I watched the bounty set against you by the devil He's raging. He's mad. He want to kill you. Look at me. He wants to kill you. So I'm standing there as a watchman. And I watch the raging of Satan. This is what makes you mad now. Why now are you mad the way you're mad? Why are you raging the way you're raging? Because the son of light, the prophet of the realm, the watchman over Israel, the elect remnant, have come out of the valley of the shadow of death. Listen now. So the work is 
His purpose that he wanted to kill and destroy you has been canceled. Because as the watchman and the prophet of time and symbol, I prevail in your behalf. Now he's raging. So there has to be a high alert. I don't care if you're driving the vehicle. I don't care where you're going, what you're doing. There has to be a high alert because he's out to kill you now. Say, was he not before? No, not like now. Because he's mad. But since when? He never knew that Paul is in me to prevail. He knew it. You see? But just like the word said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Even Satan himself. Hope. And you know this son of light. Come on. He know he'd prevail. But he hoped nonetheless. That he would not prevail. So he can come in here and kill off. Everyone here. And if he kill off everyone. Then the world is doomed. Yes. Yes. Woo glory. Who's hearing me? Let's bless him. Have your seats. So in simple terms, synergy or synergism is a Greek word. Sooner just. Sooner just. Say that. Synergus, S-U apostrophe N-E-R hyphen G-O-S. And all it simply means is working together. Right? Working together. So if we work together, what would we not be able to accomplish? Hear me now. I'm going to show you something that is not preached in relation to predestination. I've preached and taught predestination before, remember? Very few preachers, especially of evangelical, look at me, the evangelical movement. Now I want to finish saying this that I began in the teaching concerning the seat of Moses. The seat of Moses is not what people thought. Amongst our people, Israel, from the slaves who were brought into this land, because we were deprived of many things, we made do. Did we not? And so we followed many things of the slave master. They lord themselves. They became the teacher. You may be familiar with a term that is used going back in the early 60s. The Kojic movement. Who's familiar with the Kojic movement? They call it the Kojic church. It was spiritual... Negro movement by the Holy Spirit that was in the land especially in this land called America it was mainly in the Bible Belt states Bible Belt states what are the Bible Belt states? One, Florida. 
Florida is a part of the Bible Belt state. Texas. Georgia. Right? Oklahoma. Louisiana. Mississippi. Alabama. North and South Carolina. Arkansas. These are known as the Bible Belt states where many revivals occurred. And these places were mainly evangelized by white preachers. There was a preacher named A.A. A. Allen, an evangelist. They called him a prophet, but he was not because no prophet can ever be white. He was used, it was heard of, but it was not always accurate the way that many said. There was another as William Branham. And they carried themselves in a mystique way because they deemed themselves of themselves as prophets, but they were not. But they were evangelists. And it was a time, the movement of the evangelist. The prophets, the true prophets were not known because true prophets are always Edenic, black, or Israelites, but they were not known. And that day, there was a prophet mighty of the realm. He was the first of our kind of this dispensation. This was Prophet Townsend. He was known as Bishop Townsend because. He had over 200 churches. But he's a very powerful man. So the horn, move of the horn, began with him. The move of the horn you see me is only for the prophets of the realm. No, no one else. Samuel had a horn, but Samuel was never used the way I'm used. You understand? He never lifted it when it was empty and Father put oil in it. You understand? Because he was not a prophet of the realm. That is a sign that only follows who? The prophets of the realm. There are not many of us in the earth now. There's only two left. Look at me. There's only two of us left stemming out of Prophet Townsend. And that is my father, the Shofet, and the Prophet Melek King Iyanbi, me. And then the one who came from me, the door of the eighth day, Yahya Al. He is the first of his kind. Because he came out the chamber. Look, came out of the chamber. The chamber, not the body. The light. See, we're prophets of the light. We're of the realm because we came from the realm out of the light. We issue. We literally were born out of light. Conceived out of light. You understand that? We issue forth out of light. The Father who is the light. For every good and perfect gift... Cometh down from who? Father of light. Look now, every good and perfect gift. Touching me now. Cometh down from where? The Father of light. So he sent this gift to you. And Prophet Townsend was very powerful. His day, he was not known to white people who followed the evangelical or Kojic movement. He was mainly known amongst Edenic black people within the circle of the churches that he established. Very powerful. But I do recall things spoken of him. In those days they did not have money. You know that, right? where they had elaborate places of worship. 
It was pews, brown pews, wood floors, no AC unit. They couldn't afford an organ. And this was witnessed by the prophet, the root prophet, S.D. James, who was prophet of the realm but passed away. He has passed over now from the plains of the earth and have given up the body and death has prevailed over him. Because he permitted it. You have to understand, death cannot prevail over the prophets of the realm unless they permit it. He had to permit this to happen to him. And he did. But he learned this from Prophet Townsend. Prophet Townsend came in. This was witnessed by Prophet S.C. James, Prophet Show Faith. He came in before the people when they were just young, teenage boys. He stood up before the people and he said, Glory. And lifted his hand and he said, Music. And the organ began to play. The sound of an organ began to play out of nowhere, it seemed. They didn't have an organ. It came out the realm. Who else did you see something similar to that? Through me. Where I prophesied and we were worshiping. And then we worshiped. And what happened? The sound of what? music like trumpets were blowing while we were praising him. Woo, glory. You see that? But much revival and movement took place within what is called the Bible Belt States. People came from all over. They would walk. This move also reached into the islands. And some of you may remember, I remember this from a boy. Because we were being taken, carried late at night, and you know, you're living in the mountains, and there's no moonlight, but the starlight. Come on. You walk in there in the street on the side of the mountain. Come now. Say you're going to church. <laughs> and it's nighttime. Because you want to go hear this preacher preach. Well, we didn't know. We just followed Uncle We Children. It was a day when people heard the word was being preached. Or they heard of a man of God. They came running. They don't run today. They run to this occult, foolish movement they call evangelical. But I call it evangelical. Hallelujah. Where they play the music, they jump around, they act foolish, the preacher act foolish, preach and carry on, not saying one thing that makes sense. They call that evangelical movement out of Christianity. It's foolishness. It's called pseudo-Christianity. That's all it is. But we're coming back to the move of the Almighty. We never left it, but we come back to the greater move of the Almighty with dread. Come on now. Woo, glory. With dread. Are you hearing me? And like the most I said, the people I shall raise up to come in my chamber. This house, thou art his house, and this place that my prophet called the body, 
shall be a beacon to the world. Who remember that? He said, what? A tower, a beacon, a light to the world. Glory. Glory to his name. People with all manner of diseases, deformity are going to come. People are going to come with limbs lost, and limbs are going to grow out. Oh, glory. Something I never told you. But years ago, the most I showed me this place brought me in the vision of it when it was already beautified. And I had a peculiar vessel in my hand, like a horn. And there were people gathered and miracles. The Father were bringing manifestation through portals before the people. And people were screaming like they were losing their mind. And the fame of the move of the Almighty will spread across the entire world. So get ready to journey with me to various parts of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who will come? Glory to his name. Book of Psalms. What I'm going to read will be in light hear me now of predestination but nothing what you've heard how preachers teach it very few preachers teach on predestination and those who do who are literally the very 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 few leave out intricate details because they fail to consider look at me the move of the upper room remember what happened in the upper room power was given unto the disciples as apostles to do what whosoever sin ye remit it is remitted I mean it's forgiven right is removed from them they had power to do what forgive sin who else you knew did that Yahusha right and the Pharisees and all who sat in the seat of Moses meaning the authority of Moses they questioned him and so again touching on the seat of Moses we saw amongst black churches especially in America what did you see you see them sit on altars on high throne seats. Why? Because that represented authority. They thought it to be what? The seat of Moses. Now, there was nothing wrong to have a high seat, but the understanding was not correct. But look at me now. I don't want a high seat. I am the high seat. The throne is in me. Where the father sit. So me no one, no high seat. Come on now. So I'm going to have a place at the altar of ascension. A special seat. For the almighty to sit. And when people come and say, who sit there? The almighty. Woo. Woo. I love a special seat. But it will not be the highest seat. Come on. There we look up and see. That's where the Almighty sit. It's a, it's a symbol. Come on. 
of his authority in the house. Woo! Glory! Now, the book of Psalms, come there. Psalms chapter 5. I'm preparing to go to Mexico soon. How soon is soon? The Almighty knows. Want to come with me? I am going there to the region by the waters where Israel is. The elect remnant and also Israel. Because during the transatlantic slave trade, that was sanctioned by the papal bull. Many of these slaves were taken to South America, Brazil, Bahia, Brazil, and they were taken to various parts of South America, such as Mexico. They are there today and Central America. They are there. And I'm preparing to go there to carry the word. Hallelujah. Wonderful. And the princes are coming. Yes. And only certain selective of handmaids or ministers of evangelists are coming. And we're carrying the word. Amen. Hear this now, Psalms chapter 5. Psalms chapter 5. Come there if you would. Laka. We will not be able to complete this entire teaching. It will take us several days or so. We will go as far as the Lord permit in this session. We're dealing with the synergism right now and the foreknow of predestination. It says, verse 4 and verse 6. Ready? For thou art not a most high. How many are following with me? Reading what verse? Verse 4. For thou art not a most high that hath pleasure in wickedness. What is wickedness? Unruliness. Abomination. Sin. Against the Almighty. Blasphemy. So the father said he has no pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with me. Is sin evil? So he said, neither shall evil, sin, wickedness, unholiness. What? Dwell with me. It has no parts with me. So how are these many preachers and those of religion saying... They're holy, and they know the Most High. They know their God, but they're in sin because they only know their God, the God of this world, the flesh, not the Almighty. Because if you have sin in you, you're separated from him. This is very important. Read on. He says further, the foolish shall not stand in Thy sight. Whose sight? What does it mean to be foolish? The absence of 
wisdom. Foolishness is not stupidity. However, it does have a similarity. For one to be dumb, we're not dealing with a mental disorder we're speaking of. We're speaking of one that know to do right but fail to do right. That is truly someone that is dumb. Would you say? But far more than being dumb, they're foolish. They're not exercising wisdom. Because if you now know what the scripture says, I have to ask a question before we can go on. Do you believe the word of the Lord that we are reading? If you do, then we can continue this conversation. If you do not, then there's no need for us to continue. Because then it's futile. It's not going anywhere. Right? So we just read concerning the Father, thou art not a Mosai that hath pleasure in wickedness of any sort. And you think you can still do things unholy, then you're foolish. You don't have wisdom. Neither shall evil dwell with thee, with him. Then you're foolish to think you can be of him having evil in your heart or unholiness, right? The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Whose sight? The almighty sight. He said you will not even stand in his sight, right? You won't even tarry. Hear what it says now. This is heavy. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Read that out loud. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Did we write that there? Did I write that in your Bible when you were not looking? Who is David speaking of? The Most High Almighty. He said the Most High is what? He hatest what? Some. All workers of iniquity. What is iniquity? Sin. Anybody, everybody who work iniquity, who continue in it once the truth have come, he said what? The Father hateth them. Woo! That means that he don't love everybody. But this pseudo-religion, false movement teach that the Almighty or God love everybody. But we just read that he doesn't. You can't deny this. We'll go into the Hebrew word, look at the word hate. In the next few study of the scriptures. And it means exactly what that, a strong disdain feeling. A strong emotion against they are a foe to him that's heavy he said he hateth what your children your mother your father uncles aunts grandparents so called friends you everybody who's what a worker of iniquity. Why? Because you are an enemy to him. That's heavy. Now isn't that antithetical? Opposite to what you've been told growing up in religion. Yes. Told that God love everybody. And everybody is God's children. Isn't that true? But that's not what we're reading. Thou hatest all works of iniquity. You think David, King David knew what he was talking about? He was speaking through the spirit of inspiration by the spirit of the prophet. Then it says, Thou shalt destroy them that speak what? Leasing. 
So the father shall what? Destroy them. That speak leasing. The Lord, the highest power, will what? Abhor the bloody and what? Deceitful man. What does abhor mean? Hate. Same thing. Keep reading. Let's go. Come with me now. The book of Romans, chapter 9. We're going to continue going to scriptures, line upon line, precept upon precept, as the prophet Isaiah said. To show you that this is not an error, this is not self doctrine, this is predestination. Laka? Romans chapter 9. Glory to his name. Verse 13, we'll begin reading. It says, As it is written, Are we there, Laka? As it is written, Jacob, have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Paul is saying, as it is what? So it's written before this, that the father loves who? Jacob, Jacob, but he hates who? Esau. Why does he hate Esau? Because Esau despised his covenant. You got to understand what this covenant was that Esau despised. It wasn't a covenant of blessings, of wealth. The covenant that Esau rejected, that he despised, was the family of the Most High. So Esau despised the Most High's family that he promised Abraham, Isaac, and was to be given to him. But he rejected the family of the Most High. So the father is defensive over his family. How much more would a man fight for his family? Would you not expect the Most High to kill for his family? Would you not expect him to kill for you? Yes. But of course. Let me love your children. Would you let some, come, some man come in to kill your children? But you'd what? You would fight with every ounce of life in you. You would fight reckless. Come on. Let me tell you how I would fight. I would fight reckless. Meaning, without any reserve. No care for self. Bite. Scratch. Come on. Choke. Everything I can to destroy the one who have come to destroy. Then how much more the most high? And let me tell you this. Esau renounce the covenant the family of the most high for red pottage for flesh and blood for a dead flesh animal are you hearing me so the father said Jacob I love cause he was a peaceful man and he never despised my covenant which is my family. 
he would be the progenitor of my family to carry on my family in the earth in his loins but that brother of his he's a wicked something goodness is not in him righteousness is not in him therefore I will destroy him because he despised my covenant I will hate him that's heavy you think of the word hate it's a vicious word is it come on Oof. look at this let's read it again Romans chapter 9 verse 13 as it is written I mean search the confirmation for it's written elsewhere Jacob have I loved loved he didn't say love he said what loved past tense when did he love him predestination he said Jacob as Jacob what have I loved past tense this is speaking about predestination before the foundation of the world was laid I loved Jacob and before the foundation of the world was laid I hated Esau because I knew what Esau was about I knew what was in his heart I knew what he would do I knew what was in Jacob's heart I knew what Jacob would do you see I foreknew them but Esau have I hated right you still with me keep reading verse 14 what shall we say then question Paul is saying the apostle is there unrighteousness with the most high almighty the Most High Almighty forbid. See that? Why do you ask that question? Because when he revealed this, there were those that were listening and heard this, and they couldn't understand this. But Paul was not teaching some new doctrine. Paul said, it is written. In the Torah, there is the proof. The father loved Jacob, and he hated Jacob. Esau. So I'm speaking to you, Israelite Jews, because you're questioning is there any unrighteousness with the Most High? Because you're looking now, perceiving the Most High to be like you. No. He foreknew all things, he knew who. Esau was before the foundation of the world. So therefore he would count him as a foe. Right? Read on further. Hallelujah. Tell someone the word is truth. And let's answer the question. There is no unrighteousness in the Father. Verse 15. For he saith to Moses, who is Moses, the prophet of the law, right? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Who see that? So Paul again makes it clear. I am not teaching or preaching a new doctrine. I am referring to the evidence of what's written in Torah. Right? And thus he said what? For he saith to Moses. He who? The Most High Almighty saith to Moses. His prophet. He said this to his prophet. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. 
I choose to have mercy upon whom I have mercy. I chose to have mercy upon Jacob. I chose to have mercy upon whom I want to. I chose to hate Esau from the before the foundation of the world. I chose to banish. I chose to shut out the heretics out of the kingdom. And I chose to have mercy. Hallelujah. Are you seeing this? And like he said it to Moses, he said it to the prophet of the realm, the Eschadah, the fire law. Hallelujah. He chose. So we honor his choice. I won't wrestle with it. Will you? Hallelujah. He said, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So, you know, look at this now. Sit down. Even when there are those that are healed, he have compassion upon who he chooses to have compassion upon. Those who he leave in certain state of infliction, affliction, he chose to lead them there. He chooses to have compassion upon whom he chooses to because he is the almighty. You can't wrestle with him. There it is. Overseer just declare what the word said. His ways are past finding out. So you just want accept what he said. Just hear what Overseer said. Say it again. Submit and accept. Submit and accept. Tell somebody. Submit and accept. There's no two ways about it. There's only one way. His way. Glory. Verse 16. Let's read this verse. Romans chapter 9. So then, it is not of him that willeth. That means nobody willeth. No one chooses. No one determined of themselves. Nor of him that runneth. Meaning, who race towards this thing to force this thing to happen, to make something happen, to force the hand of the Most High. Determine what must be in the earth. It is not them. It's who? The Most High. But of the Most High, the Almighty, that what? Sheweth mercy. Glory. Hallelujah. I rejoice in this truth. Hallelujah. Ah, he goes on to say, and this must be read. So you see the mastery of the hands of the Most High. Verse 17. For the scripture saith, again, Paul refers to what? Evidence written in the laws of the word. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. Who heard that? That I might shew my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So the father... Before the earth was ever made, before the foundation of the earth was ever laid, predestined, foreknew that a child would be born named Pharaoh who would rebel against him, hold his family that he promised come out the loins of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that Esau despised and Pharaoh imprisoned come on so like the father hated Esau he hated Pharaoh and he set Pharaoh's heart to rebel against him so he can show his mighty power to the entire earth and that's what the Mosai is going to do he's doing in these last days 
he's going to show his mighty power through this prophet of who he is by searing the heart of man. Come on. And his dread going to move in the land. Who's hearing me? And they're going to rebel. But his power going to come in dread. But he's doing this because he purposed this before the foundation of the earth was laid. They have to be born so he can show his mighty power. Hallelujah. Come on and thank you. Mm. Romans chapter 8. Come there now. This word is powerful. Mind opening. It can be thought provoking and mind crippling. If you attempt to reason the word of the Most High, Almighty, based on religion, based on these Christian pastors, these false prophets, false teachers who preach for money, who preach a doctrine of inclusion. Everybody's included in when predestination doesn't teach, everybody's included. See that? It teaches separation. But didn't Christianity teach everybody's included? But not according to predestination in the scripture. Everyone's not included. Only the elect remnant is included. The elect. Romans chapter 8, come there. Prepare to read. Laka. Verse 29, it says, For whom he... What does it mean, whom? The individual, right? Right? For whom the individual, the person, the nation, for whom he did foreknow. What does the word foreknow mean? To know beforehand. Say that. The word foreknow means to have knowledge of or to know beforehand. So the father had knowledge of everyone. What they would do, what they'll be, what they'll say, how they'd act towards him beforehand. Right? For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate. That's heavy. So now we're dealing with two distinctive words, descriptive before in the government of the Most High before the foundation of the world was laid, before creation. Foreknow and what? Predestinate. What does predestined mean? To predetermine beforehand. So you're dealing with foreknow, have knowledge of first, because he's what? Omniscient. Um, All-knowing. He knows everyone before they were born. He knew who was going to be born. He knew what their soul would be like. He knew what their mind was going to be like. He knew they'd be religious. He knew they'd be a liar, a murderer. He knew they'd despise him. He knew he'd be holy. He knew he'd be righteous. He knew he'd be the elect. And since he already foreknew this, he predestined you, predetermined you to be that way. Meaning he made you to be that way. Because he already saw you, knew you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Father. He knows if you're going to hear, you know you're whether you're going to reject. You can't get over on the Almighty. You can't fool him. You can't deceive him. So it says what? For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate to be what? Hear this. This is heavy. Not just predestinate to be saved. He says what? To what? 
predestinate to be conformed. What does, be, what does conform mean? It is a morphe, a taking on of a change, a transformation, being made into what? A state. Conformed to the image of his son. Woo! This is before the foundation of the world was laid. This is before the word took on flesh, dwelt among men. He foreknew you and predestined you to what? To be conformed to the image, 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 shape, likeness. Come on. Of his what? His son. About his family again. Which son is he referring to? Yahushua Mashiach. The word that was made flesh. So you now, your body is going to be made word. Amen. Word was made flesh. Light of the word of myself was made flesh. But flesh is going to be made word. Yeah. Woo! You're going to be made word. Come on. What can the word not do? What can the word of the Most High not do? Fail. What can the word of the Most High do? All things. So he's going to change the vile flesh of the body into the form, shape, and image of his son, who is the word that was made flesh. And that's why he said, be not conformed. Be not of what? The shape, nor made of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How? By the word that is being taught to you. Living this word, believing this word through faith. Faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord, right? You set this word, live by it. It changes your flesh, changes this body from a vile state that you become now the living word substance <laughs> and when you walk up in a place and you're not shy and you're full of boldness say the word is in the midst tell somebody the word is in the midst the conform image of the dear son. I am of the family of the household of the Most High. <laughs> Glory to his name. Let's thank him. Let's bless the Almighty. For he's worthy. Consecration and blessings upon the people. Seal them, Father, by thy mighty hand. Even by thy breath, I breathe. Ah. Confirmation of thy breath of life. And I chase death, you vile spirit, from this congregation, the elect remnant. That will be living in the last days. For the mighty hand. And glory. Of the almighty. Blessings. And we are sealed. Amen. So it is done. Let's thank him everybody.